Hello and welcome back to Beckler Guitars and Repairs and today we're checking out a G and L. So I picked this one up locally and uh it looks so cool, I had to go check it out at least, and it played really nicely, so I picked it up. And this is a G&L Doheny. Doheny? Doheny. Yeah, so this is the Tribute Series. And this is a Brazilian cherry fingerboard, which is kind of cool. Um, this is a poplar body, instead of like an alder or an ash. Poplar, which is kind of unique. And these are the Wide Bobbin Fullerton MFD single coil pickups to 25.5 inch scale length a 9.5 radius and it's got a maple neck looks like it's a not a bone nut but it looks like it's like um, a new bone or a tusk style nut and it's got the double fulcrum tremolo And uh, yeah, it's in a really cool surf green, poly finish, uh, one volume, two tones. So it looks like a master volume and a tone for each pickup. And a three-way toggle selector. So yeah, this is uh, an Indonesian made GNL, I believe they're made uh, by Cortec, the same factory as Cort or Schechter or a ton of other brands. Maple neck. Let's have a little bit of a better look at that Brazilian cherry wood. It's it's nice and dark, so it kind of resembles a a rose wood, but a little different. It looks nice as a, a fingerboard wood. And it's got your acrylic inlays. Looks like uh, pretty jumbo flat and wide frets on there. And yeah. Right now the action's a little bit high, so it's going to need a little bit of a setup. And uh, as far as marks or blemishes go, I don't really see anything. It looks like it's in really nice shape. This one didn't come with a gig bag or a, a case or anything, so I brought my own gig bag to pick it up. So, okay, well, let's get the strings off. Let's check out the electronics. Let's take the neck off. Let's check the neck pocket. Um, let's check out the frets and the truss rod. Restring it, set it up, and uh, see how it sounds. All right, let's get some specs quick. So there's our weight, eight pounds, 13.2 ounces. So there you have it, the neck profile. So it's a pretty rounded C. It flattens out a little bit by the 12th fret, but pretty standard C. Nut, width of the nut, we've got a 1.675 and at the 12th. Two point zero one three, and the first fret neck depth is point eight two five, and at the twelfth, 
point eight eight four five. Our truss cavity looks normal. I've tried it, it's responsive, it's not stripped at all. And here's our frets. They're in very nice shape, no pitting, no signs of wear at all, really. They just need to be cleaned up a little bit and they're going to be like new. And this is a 9.5 radius and a 25.5 scale length. And our neck looks nice and straight as well. No twists or back bow or anything like that. All right, let's check out the pickups. So the bridge pickup is reading 6.10 and the neck pickup is reading 5.80 and the middle is reading 3.00. And I just want to mention that the frets are nice and smooth on the sides. There's no sprout at all. So, yeah, very, very smooth. All right, so I've got the pick guard off. And, um, yeah, it's kind of a little hard to get under here and look, but I'm going to try to sneak a few peeks here. So, everything's wired up. I don't want to unsolder anything. But we can see here that they're using full size pots, which is nice. And it looks like both the tones have a capacitor, which makes sense. But then the tone control or the volume control also has a, a disc capacitor there, too. And all of the wiring looks original it doesn't look like anything's been messed with um, there's our three-way toggle switch which is kind of an import style switch and uh, the pickups I'm gonna take one out here and probably maybe not both but uh, maybe both All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove the screws there it looks like they're just screwed into the body much like a p90 would be um, and then there's our trim system there. It's like a, it's a two-point trim system, very similar to like a fender. Uh, which nice is that the whammy bar actually has a Allen key that locks it in there, so it can't fall out. And you can adjust the stiffness as well. And then just a quick look at the back. Uh, very similar to like a Strat. We've got our tremolo cavity with. Uh, the block and the screws and the springs. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and take these screws out for the pickups so we can see what the pickups look like. Alright, so I've just taken out the bridge pickup here so we can have a look. Uh, unfortunately, there's not much to see. They're unbranded. Um, what they do have is a little piece of foam uh, that has actually two springs uh, in the holes in the foam. Um, so you to keep the uh, pickup up and for the height adjustment, which is kind of cool. I've never really seen it done like that before. And then our cavities are, all have shielding paint. And what's nice about the Tribute series with GNL is they actually use the same pickups uh, in their core line. So all the US GNLs actually have the same pickups. Um, so these ones have the cloth wiring and they're just uh, well-made pickups, so I'm expecting this thing to sound quite nice. Uh, it's well-built. It's got nice components. I don't see any uh, quality control issues so far. And everything is looking looking good. So I'm going to put the pick guard back on, put the pickup back on, and then uh, we'll take off the neck, and we'll see what that neck pocket looks like. Okay, here we have the neck off, and... Looks like a nice clean neck pocket. It fits in there nice and snug. Uh, there's some sort of markings on there. I can't really make sense of it. I'm not sure. Some sort of factory marking. And nothing on that area of the neck. And again, just a few more factory marks in there. Looks like nothing really stands out of what that might be. 
and I'll just show you what the fit looks like on the neck pocket. So just nice and snug and uh, there's no gaps or anything so it's a nice looking neck pocket. So I just want to show I spent a little bit of time buffing up the frets on the buffer. So first I used a fret rocker to check for any high spots. Everything was good so I hit it quickly on the buffer to get that nice mirror shine for the frets and uh, then I cleaned and oiled the fretboard so the neck and the fretboard is looking really nice alright now I'm going to go ahead and restring it and we can check the setup the intonation and make any adjustments if needed here we are all restrung um, I've also stretched the strings uh, and set it up and intonated it so it was, it was pretty strange when I was uh, stretching the strings I actually broke two E strings on this guitar high E uh, I used a Dario and um, in my other videos I always tell how when I stretch them they hardly ever break and uh, this was two in a row so I checked the saddle to see if there's a burr or something and there wasn't so I don't know if I just got a bad batch of strings from the factory or if the Dario quality is slipping or what's going on but uh, yeah it's pretty rare that I break an E string when I'm stretching the strings but it happened anyway so um, <clears throat> I adjusted the truss rod just a little bit um, so now if I use my notched straight edge I can see, oh my hand's in the way there, you can see there's just a tiny little bit of a gap between the straight edge and the fretboard, so that's about where you want it to set the action correctly. Um, if you were getting buzz you could also loosen it to create more of that back bow, um, but the frets on this are really level so you can get it pretty low with no buzz or fretting out. So at the go here at the third fret if I fret the third you can see that the string is just nicely resting against the first fret very close on each one so if that was higher than it should be with the, the action set I could take a, a fret file and lower the action for each individual slot on the nut file on the nut uh, that's one way to correct that but this one was quite cut quite nicely and then we can just check the action at the 12th with my gauge here so at the low E we're sitting at about 1.5 to 2 millimeters and at the high E about a 1 to 1.5 millimeter so nice low action and I'm gonna go ahead and just play so we can see that there's no fretting out anywhere on the fingerboard. Alright, so yeah, all tuned up, um, plays nice with low action, those frets are looking great now with the buffing and the cleaning, and there's no buzz anywhere in the fretboard, so it's set up really nice, 
And uh, I've also tuned it with the Strobo Plus HD tuner and intonated it as well. So I had to move a couple saddles to improve the intonation, but nothing major. It was all minor, minor tweaks on this guitar. Overall, it came pretty nicely. Didn't have to do much to this one. All right, so last thing to do is let's plug it in and see how it's. All right, here we are plugged into the 65 Deluxe Reverb reissue with the Celestian Creamback uh, speaker and the Bagheera PS1 Power Soak. I'm just gonna hear how it sounds um, clean and then we're gonna put a little dirt on there and see how that sounds. One thing I wanted to mention is uh, I found out what these tone controls are. So they're, they're the P, B, T control system. Basically it stands for uh, passive bass and treble tone controls. So you've got your master volume here for each pickup position. And then you've also got a treble and a bass tone. So they're a lot more dynamic than just the tones. So you can add more bass, you can roll off the treble, you can roll off the bass. There's a lot more tonal combinations that you can get uh, with the passive bass and treble control. So it's kind of cool. So I'm just going to run through some tones on the clean here. So let's have a look. So I'm just going to do a D. And I can roll off the bass. So the far knob is your bass knob, so you can really hear that. And then this is uh, your treble tone.
So yeah, it's uh, it sounds great, clean. It's got that nice like jangly spank kind of a sound. <laughs> Yeah, sounds really good. There's lots of usable tones, and uh, it's quite versatile with the uh, the two tones. And the uh, the trem system seems to keep it in tune quite well. I'll just show that. All right, so I was pretty aggressive with it. Let's just see how it tuned, how it stayed in tune. Yeah, so it stayed uh, really nicely in tune there, maybe a little tiny bit out. Let me just double check that. Yeah, so even with aggressive uh, tremoloing, it uh, stayed in tune really nicely. Okay, now I'm going to turn on my uh, some distortion to see what that sounds like. I'm just going to go ahead and crank the amp a little harder so we can get that natural breakup. So this is about a six and a half. So now that we've torn this thing apart, set it up, checked out all the electronics, the insides, took off the neck, uh, buffed it up, cleaned it up, and tested it, what are my final thoughts on the GNL Tribute Doheny? Well, actually, I was really impressed by this guitar. Um, the fit and finish are fantastic. It needs a little bit of a setup, but not much, just a couple tweaks. We needed to uh, give it a truss adjustment and lower the saddles a bit, intonate it and tune it. But other than that, it was uh, it came in really good condition. Uh, no scratches or dings anywhere. The finish is flawless. The uh, Brazilian cherry rosewood, or not rosewood, but the Brazilian cherry wood used for the fingerboard is gorgeous. And uh, it's got a really nice maple neck. It's got some flat, wide jumbo frets. 
which are nice to play. And the pickup sounded insanely good. Very, very good. Um, like I said before, GNL uses their US pickups in the Tribute Series as well, so sounds just as good as the US ones. And uh, yeah, there were some really nice usable tones you can get out of this. It's really nice, kind of a jangly, jangly sound. Um, really good for like surf rock or rockabilly music or classic rock even. You can get some really nice tones. Uh, I'm sure country, you could figure out some tones for that as well. And the uh, the two tone controls, one for treble, one for bass, uh, the, the passive bass and treble controls, TBT or, or PBT or whatever, um, very usable. Uh, you can get some really nice variations and it's quite versatile. And uh, yeah, it's, this is a really nice guitar. Plays great, sounds great. And uh, these won't break the bank either. I think they're quite reasonable in terms of price. So yeah, if you can find one of these, um, I definitely would say pick it up. I don't really have anything bad to say about it. The trim system works well, stays in tune. Uh, the components are all high quality. They're full full size pots, nice capacitors. Uh, the switch was an import switch, but hey, it works just fine. Uh, the tuners, I guess, you could upgrade. They weren't the best tuners, but they're just kind of your standard, you know, import tuners. I didn't have a problem with them. They didn't really keep it out of tune at all, but you could upgrade to some nicer tuners. I think that would be uh, the only thing I might recommend. But yeah, other than that, uh, this is going to be available on the Reverb page. Um, and it doesn't have a case, so it's going to ship with a, a high quality soft shell. But um, yeah, I'd recommend this guitar absolutely, or if you can find one um, that someone's selling nearby you for a decent price, I would definitely jump on it. Alright, so that's all we have for today. Thanks for tuning in to Beckler Guitars and Repair, and uh, we'll see you soon.